Hey what's up guys welcome to another video in which we are going to learn about java reflection with examples so guys in java reflection allows us to inspect and manipulate classes interfaces constructors methods as well as fields at runtime so guys all these elements of the java programming language that is classes interfaces constructors can be easily inspected and manipulated using java reflection so in order to reflect a java class we first need to create an object of class and these are some of the ways in which we can create the object of a class so we can use the dot class extension by using the name of the class over here followed by the dot class and then the second way is by using the get class method so in case we have created an object of a class for which we want to get the class instance we can use that object followed by dot get class method as well as the third option is using the for name which is one of the methods of this class and then guys after creating the object of the class we can use these methods that is get name get modifiers or get super class as well in order to get the elements of those class so guys let us check this with the help of examples now let's say we have a class called as animal and then inside this animal class we have just one method that is public void and then we have display method now what this will do is it will just display one string i am an animal so guys this string we will print now guys let us say we have another class over here that is dog and then we extend this animal class which we want it to be a parent class of this child class that is dog so we can use the extends keyword as we had seen previously in order to inherit the properties of this parent class that is animal followed by providing the name of the parent class that is animal so guys whatever attributes are there currently it is just having the display method this will get inherited to the dog class as well and using the dog object we can also access this method that is display method over here but now over here what we are going to have is we will have one more method that is make sound so guys we are going to have a make sound method and what we are going to print over here is the sound of the dog that is we are just going to print bark bark so guys overall in the dog class we are having two methods one method is of its own that is make sound which is going to print this statement and another method is inherited that is the display method got inherited from this parent class that is animal class now guys as we had seen previously we can easily call these methods by creating a dog object over here so in the main method i'll create a dog object that is dog1 it is equal to new dog and in this way we create the object of a class and then let's say i want to call both the methods so the very first method is dog1 dot as you can see we have display method over here so that can also be called and we have dog1 dot make sound method as well so both the methods can be called over here so guys let me just save this file and try running this code now so as you can see i am an animal and bark bark is getting printed now guys let's say i want some details of this dog class so what we can do is we can use the class named as class over here so guys we have a class called as class over here followed by the object so let's say we have object of the class and then it is equal to now guys as i have told you we have three ways in order to get the class details so as you can see we will use the first method over here that is using the dot class extension so over here we have to provide the name of the class that is dog and then followed by dot and then we have the class so as suggested by the eclipse we have dog dot class and guys important thing is there is no open and close brackets or any other kind of curly braces over here guys one more important thing over here is this class that is the name of the class over here is class this is reserved by java in order to get details of other classes in this way by creating an object for that particular class so guys you should never create a class with the name as class over here you can have any other names like we have used over here such as animal dog or any other name but not the class as the class name so guys as you can see we have created an object of type class and over here we are using the dog class over here now guys let's say we want to get the name of the class so it is very simple over here we will have the print statement and using this object you can get the name of the class so after the object name we provide dot and then we have get name 
So as you can see, this get name it will return a string that is the name of the class. So let me just save this file and try running this code now. So as you can see, dog is getting printed. Over here we can have the prefix as well so that it makes little sense over here. So the name of class is and then we have the object dot get name. Let me just save this file and try running this code now. So as you can see the name of class is dog. So the class name is getting printed over here. Now guys, let's say we want to get the super class of this class that is dog. So the super class of this class is animal over here and we want to get the details of that super class. So what we can use is we can use the get super class method. So we can use this object that is of the class type followed by dot and then we have get super class. As you can see, this super class is returning the data type of the class type. So we will hit on enter and then we will receive this value inside the class object over here. So we have class and then followed by super class over here as the name of the variable followed by equal to operator. So this object of super class will return the super class for this object. That is this object is referring to the object of this dog class. And in order to print this, we can easily use the get name method. So I will have the print statement over here and then we have the super class name is followed by we have super class over here as the object name followed by get name over here so we will get the name of the super class and then let me just save this file and try running this code now so as you can see the super class name is animal so we have used the get name method again in order to get the name of the class so guys in this way we can easily use the objects of the data type class in order to get the reference of a particular class that we want to get now guys this was one of the ways in which we can get the reference of a dog class we can use other methods as well as you can see we can use the get class method over here so in order to use this get class method we have to use one of the objects of the dog class so we can use this dog one over here so we have dog one dot get class so guys in case you already have the object instead of the class name you can use this dot class method in order to get the reference and store it in the object of the class data type now guys let me just save this file and try running this code now it should print the same statements that is the name of the class is dog and the super class name is animal now guys another way is to use the for name method now this for name method belongs to this class over here so i'll just remove this and use the class that is class followed by dot for name and then guys as a parameter it takes a string that will be the name of the class that we want to get the object for so i'll just hit on enter and provide the name of the class over here that is dog and then followed by semicolon over here. Let me just save this file and try running this code now. So as you can see, it is showing errors exist in required projects. Let me cancel this. So as you can see, there is a red underline over here. It says unhandled exception type class not found. So guys, in case if this name that we have provided, let's say if it is not present, then we have to handle that particular exception at the runtime. So there are two options. So either we can have the throw keyword or we can surround these statements around the try catch block that we are going to see in the upcoming videos as well. So guys, for now we are going to select the first option that is throws class not found exception over here. And then let me just save this file and try running this code now. So as you can see the same output we can see the name of the class is dog and the super class name is animal now guys what is the use of this class not found exception let's say we have the class name as dog one over here but guys there is no such class that is named as dog one we only have two classes over here that is animal and dog so what will happen in this case this throw class not found will come into picture over here so let me just save this file and try running this code now to see what will be the output so as you can see there is some exception that is coming over here class not found exception so guys you can handle this exception in the catch block as well which we are going to see in the upcoming videos now guys let us see how we can access the methods of a particular class that is for this dog class we will access the two methods that are present that is make sound and the display using this class object so guys i'll just remove these lines of code for now and then over here we are going to have dog dot class so guys we have this object of the class now over here using this object we can get the methods of this class so how do we get the methods we use the object name followed by get declared methods so over here we will have declared 
methods so as you can see we have the second option get declared methods it is returning an array of method so guys we have another class called as method over here and the array of such classes will be returned over here so i'll just select this and in order to get the values we will have the class that is method class over here followed by the name of the array that is methods so guys all these get declared methods that is in case there are multiple methods over here all those methods will get stored in this method class now since we have an array of methods over here we have to use a loop in order to get the name of each and every method so what we will do is we will use the for each method over here so we have method class the name of the variable we will provide it as m and then colon and then we have methods over here so it will iterate through all the methods and then guys we will have the print statement that is going to print the method name is and then followed by m dot and then we have get name method over here as well in order to get the name of the method so we have this print statement over here and it is having m dot get name and this m variable will be having each and every method when we are iterating through this loop so guys let me just save this file and try running this code now over here so as you can see the method name is make sound so guys the important thing over here is even though we are inheriting the display method from the animal class to a child class but still it will not be treated as the method of this child class over here and that is the reason why only make sound can be accessed from here so guys let's say we have another method over here so i'll just copy and paste this over here and we have the method name as dog name so i'll just provide dog name over here and then let's say i have the string over here as puppy so the dog name is puppy so now we have two methods of this dog class so guys let me just save this file and try running this code now so as you can see the method name is make sound and then the second method name is dog name and guys in this way we can easily access the method names as well so similarly you can get the attributes of the constructors and the fields on your own as well with the help of your exercises and it will be a good practice for you so guys that's it in this video please make sure that you like this video so that it reaches to more people and subscribe to this channel so that you get the notifications on upcoming videos as well the next video that we are going to talk about is java exceptions and exception handling so Stay tuned.